The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we have been chosen and called to the purpose of glorifying Him on this earth, because it was an executive will of God, Thelema, to create glory, honor, and dunamis power, so that the one who has created it is worthy of receiving it. But the source to which that he has to receive is through us, the church age. In the past it was Israelites, now it is the church age. Aleke Niketesis, unique dispensation of this entire dispensations which could ever come. And furthermore, the things which can take place after the rapture of the church are in the millennium. We are not worried much, but right now he is worthy to receive those things. Because today, if it has been called today and we are alive, we are due unto him several things. Number one, which is we, that we are due unto him, is nothing but knowledge of Bible doctrine, which we should grow, we should learn. Which we are due unto him, is that not to grieve him, not to squelch him, but rather to grow up with knowledge of the word. And this is what we have been learning from many of the lessons of our Lord, which has been given to us through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Number one, in Hebrews 3, where with our Lord says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Furthermore, he says, as long as it has been called as each day, every day, what you need to do, we have been given a great power to know and to understand what we need to do. And that great power of understanding is nothing but for a great work which has been called that we need to exhort each other every day as long as it has been called today. And furthermore, not only this, we have many more things to be learned, to be understood, particularly love. When it comes to the point of love, we have been here called to the one whom we have not seen. How you can say you love God. To the one whom you need to love God, you need to say that the brethren that have been visible to you, to them you have to love. How we can love our fellow brethren. How we can love this world. This world we can love because they have been already into darkness. We can love them by giving them the light, shining forth, holding forth the word of the light. The world in the sense unbelievers, not the cosmos diabolicus or the orderly things, methodists, which have been set out by Satan, but the people who are innocently perishing, whose minds have been blinded by Satan, not to know. And this is what we find in Second Corinthians 4.4, 4, because it is transforming itself to look like the angel of light, but it is not. It is not metamorphomai, it is metaschematizoa. Therefore, what we can understand? We can understand it is already blinding the eyes of the people of this world. World, so that they should not look upon the glorious gospel of Christ which has been shining in us and we have to show forth that either by thought, word or deed and particularly in the action to these believers, to these unbelievers who do not know. But how do we love our believers? By giving them exhortation day by day so that they could come to the realization of Bible doctrine. And furthermore, we have been called to look upon to understand what it is that our Lord really looks in a human. Our Lord really looks in 1 Peter 3, 4, particularly teaching a lesson to the woman, a meek and quiet spirit, the meek protos, the word which has been used, a virtue which could be born out of the strength of character. That is not just meekness or gentleness. It is the word wherewith the mind and heart have been getting along to understand what exactly could be the truth, what exactly can be the point, and how we can grow up in a day-by-day -day receiving of this strength. That is what krautos means. And quiet means, it meant to say peaceable. This is what our Lord is looking upon us. But we are not able to understand. Because we never believe that already there is a solution for us. And problem is nothing but the solution which we need to take. The same pattern what we can learn in Genesis 2, 7 through following till to the point of 15. Where our Lord teaches to them through the simple process that there is no one to kill the soil. Then what did our Lord do? First, he made a man. After creating him a man, what did he do? He went on to make the 
fertile of the land to say you sprout up according to your species. When they have been bought, how can be they bought up? Our Lord gives further details through the rivers, through the water, the four rivers exemplifying. And then our Lord says, this man to be placed there with a great admonition to tell, you take everything and now you start serving this land. You may eat so that you can eat of, very specifically the word which has been given for us in Genesis 2.16. What he can eat, first the spiritual food in the, in the original Hebrew I'm telling. And furthermore he says, what you can eat that you may eat of, First, you eat, need to eat the spiritual food, and then you will be getting the physical food. The spiritual food is the daily intake of Bible doctrine for him, then and then existed. When they sinned in Genesis 3, we will learn those things as we reach there. But when they sinned, definitely they lost the fellowship of God being spiritually dead. The spirit got shriveled up. This is what, dear brother, you and I should know. But our Lord said, out of the fruit of good and evil, you are not going to eat. That was a restriction, but they failed. Today also, when we learn in Deuteronomy 8.3 or Matthew 4.4, 4, our Lord tells to us, you shall, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which comes from the mouth of Lord God Almighty. That's what you shall know, the real Hebrew in second uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Eating you shall eat. First you shall eat the spirit spiritual food and then you're going to eat the physical food. Once again we are going to have an entrance into this paradise to eat says in Revelation which is of a great lesson for us to learn. There which was been restricted now again he gives us a chance to eat. But today dear brethren many believers have lost this privilege. They have lost the privilege of daily intake of Bible doctrine to the daily intake of this great manna of spiritual food. They have not understood what it could be. They have not understood what it can be. But rather they are just going around to do that which is not right. And that is what we can find the churches being absolutely ruined without having proper word of the Lord. Elijah during his time in 1 Kings chapter 18 challenging the priests of Balaam or with the priests of the Jezebel which he has been taken out to Ashur and Baal. Our, our Lord strengthens Elijah to give and to tell. We shall come to an open debate. We shall come to know what it is on the Mount Carmel. You take your guards if your guards are right. Why do you want to halt up on two opinions? The greatest verse of all time. If it is Lord, you serve him. That is what Yahweh Elohim. If it is your guards, you shall serve them and we shall have a test on it. And that is what we can see. The altar which has been fallen down once again Elijah constructs that altar that is what you and I should learn today dear brethren this pulpit today are not communicating the mystery doctrine of the church age the way how our Lord was being given for a great admonition in Daniel chapter 9 when we can learn Gabriel coming and telling to him I have given Lord has sent me to give you shakal and bina that is what to know the wisdom of intelligence and to know what is right that is what shakal and bina is today the ministers have not known what is for Fallen down. What is the altar that has been fallen down? And how they have to construct it back? How they have to take it back? How they have to get back to the reality of the word? They have really forgotten these things. And they have went on to do that which is not at all right. And therefore we need to know how our Lord uses Elijah there. And he makes him to build up those altars. Not only just building up those altars. He does not equalize the things with an unbelievers. But rather he says my God is a true and jealous God. is beyond the capacity of these unbelievers. What they think they can do to their gods. Like the things which like Sheikh Hamadida, Zakir Naik, the things they are doing, they can read the Bible equivalent to us, but we know they are, cannot understand because they are spiritually dead. Because Bible doctrine is a spiritual phenomena and you need to be born again. And if we believers are also reading the Bible in the same manner, then it doesn't have any difference at all. Elijah didn't do there the same thing over there in the altar. He constructed it and what did he do? He made a trench. He digged be behind this below this altar and he pour water not once twice but thrice so that it could be absolutely filled with the water and now he opens to pray to the Lord and the fire comes and it consumes out the difference between them and us is that they have just constructed an altar for them to give but here he has constructed an altar and made a trench and poured water three times over to fill it out likewise even in second Corinthians 6 we learn do not be equally yoked with unbelievers. What has the fellowship with righteousness and unrighteousness? What has a fellowship with Baal with the temple of God? We are the temple of Christ. And what do we look? Not just reading the Bible. Deuteronomy 17, 18 tells to us to write the Bible if you want to be a king. And Lord made us kings and priests. Then where is the copy of Bible that we need to write? If an unbeliever can read the Bible, then if you read the Bible, what is the equivalence between the both? You need to write the Bible. 
That is what the great difference we can learn in the lesson of Elijah. Writing the Bible. They fail to recognize the truth. The parents fail to teach to their children, says Jeremiah, because we find the very great lesson in chapter 16. Their fathers have done wrong, but these children have done greater, worse imagination than them. They have went worse. If they soared to the, to the wind, but these children, they have soared to the war wind. And do you know what they get? It will be double war wind, what they can get. That is what today it is happening today in our pulpit. When the parents are themselves not knowing the word of the Lord very accurately, how can they train up their children to go in the way that they have to go? They will not. And that is what you and I should learn, dear brethren. It is of a great pain for us to tell you all these things. That's why Daniel confesses his sins along with his fathers in Daniel chapter 9 and he tells, Lord, according to thy righteousness, you save us. According to thy truth, you heal us. According to thy truth, you come back to us. Not according to our righteousness, not according to our deeds, but because of the great mercy you save us. What a great lesson we can learn. Even in Ezekiel, our Lord says, the way of these false teachers in the altar they are going to build up, I am going to break them down, I am going to get them down, then my anger will be finished, then my fury will come to calm, because you are God's property. You are Lord's absolute alakinic adhesus. You have been given equal privilege and equal opportunity to show forth the valor of God to show forth the praises of God. But what are we showing today in Romans 3, 12 and 13? We do find what they show. They show that their mouth is an open speculum. Their tongues have the venom of asps. Really, dear brethren, it's of a great pain. Rather than showing the virtues of God through our tongue, through our action, through our words, we are not showing through our lips the praises of God. We are not living a life that could show forth the great virtueness of Christ. And that is what we can find today in our pulpit. That is what we can look upon in our pulpit. Unbelievers have been much more morally superior, finer than us. Christianity has not been called for morality. Hagar Sune tells to us, you have been already plunged out into the reality of a great virtue because you have been transferred out from these moral standards and you have been given the great reality of the world, which is of very great importance. And many of the people do not understand these things, dear brethren. Many of the people, even the pastors have really made why the Revelation 2 says to us during the church of Pergamos and Smyrna that it has become a synagogue of Satan because they call themselves as Jews but they are not really Jews. Today the pastors they are calling themselves as pastors but they are not really the pastors who have to really take in the word of the Lord. It's of a very great pain to tell you this thing. And many of the people have really talk, taken to that extension today in our churches that they have really forsaken the truth. That they have really gone out of the truth. And they have made synagogue of Satan. And in Pergamos they have made the Satan's throne. And furthermore, what did they do? Not only just Satan's throne, but Satan's population throne. Producing false teachers. That's why our Lord says, I'm going to throw them out. I'm not going to really rescue them. I'm not going to really save them. But rather I'm going to pull them down. But the judgment seat of Christ it will be too late. That's why every believer has been indwelt by the Trinity so that they could judge each and every day what is right, what is wrong, and they could correct their paths. Every day, every second, every breath. The glory of Jehovah. That is what you and I have been called, dear brethren. But we are not going really by the renovation of our Lord's grace upon us. If we have been kept alive today, what is the purpose? Show forth the greater glory of Jehovah on this earth because He created it and is worthy to receive it back. He created the glory and the honor and the things pertaining to dunamis, the power, and is really worthy to receive them back, but He has to receive through us. And that is what you and I have been called to show forth. So consider over these things. Which way you are going? How are you going? Are you really receiving them? Are you really taking them? Are you really understanding to them? Are you really exercising to the point of reality of the word to them? He has crowned us with greater glory and honor, says Hebrews 2, 5-9.
Mm-hmm. And no one should take away that crown. That means no one should take away the thinking of Christ, Dokia, which comes from the root of Doxa to explain the glory. Time, which meant to give a high exalted position for his word. And Dunamis, which is the inherent ability of God, but now he has given exousias as we grab in a day-by-day process which has been learnt ability and is able to receive them from us. What are we doing, dear brother? Think over these issues. Time is too short. We cannot waste playing pokery. We cannot waste playing mockery. If at all you want to mock, you can mock as the way Elijah mocked to those Baal who were their priests. He said, does your God been traveling? Does your God been, uh, he's been sleeping? Wake him up. Till the evening they couldn't do. In the evening time it was his turn. And he showed the great glory of Jehovah once again. Being manifested one man versus 850. The Baal God prophets which they've been used by Zezebel. One man really snuffled them out to take care. Not even one to be left. And he slaughtered them. God uses only one man at a time and he knows how to use the key people in every location in this world. We are in the enemy territories and Lord knows how to train us up, how to cause us to be perfectly matching to the maturity of Christ in his word and be using for his glory. He trains an up. Without training he cannot take. If he has given it the capacity and the courage, he requires for it to look upon that ability, that inherent ability of exousias, not particularly dunamis. Dunamis belongs to God. That is what made him take of Bible doctrine. That's why we have been loaned to say in Hebrews 3, stand fast into the liberty wherewith Lord has given to you this ability, in, not, not in Hebrews, but in Ephesians 6.10. Finally, brethren, stand fast in the strength and in the might of God. That's what day by day, day by day, day by day, process of growing up. Think about these issues, dear brethren. Will you be a faithful servant to God in learning His Word and be faithful enough to do His work? Or you will be XYZ man and really waste your time in useless and worthless speculations. So think over this as we shall continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with through the word. We pray that Lord carry the whole spirit, let us understand these things and make it so a blessing and challenge sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.